Hey there, I'm Miska and welcome to Hitscan. Today we're going to be looking at a massive Valorant update. Quite a lot of stuff in here actually. I was surprised to get an update like this already. Visual changes for maps, updated character models, a lot of quality of life and bug fixes to all sorts of systems and abilities. There's a lot to go through in this video so I'm just going to kind of jump in game and start going through things. Some of this video will be a little bit more just trying out the changes and seeing what things look like in game but there will also be more of a super cut of a lot of changes towards the end as well. I hope you guys enjoy and uh, yeah let's get on with it Ooh, updated omen oh, looks good it's not even that much change just you can see some of the armor it's the face now has got a bit more character to it uh, the portrait's still the old one though <laughs> let's check out breach does he have oh yeah oh my okay this yes I think this is really solid. This looks a bit more Viking-ish. His face looks kind of the same though. Very nice. Very. I mean, I saw the model on the pick screen, but this looks... I mean, it looks good. I don't know. It just... He looks more like he has his own outfit now rather than looking like a random car mechanic. All right. I mean, you look the exact same from the back as the cape or hood or whatever is the exact same basically mm. i think so at least i think it's pretty like honestly the armor and the different face i think that does enough he looks more intimidating now before he looked a bit silly also i didn't get an in-game shot of this but brimstone's character model was also changed and it just kind of fixed the shirt a little bit added textures to some of the things that there were not textures on before like the shells on his body and some of his armor looking pretty good and uh, yeah i'm happy they did this play a lot of brimstone so to see that broken character model was a little bit sad just game after game but yeah looking good there was also a fix for a sage wall boost but inside to look over the double doors and haven this is what it used to look like you can't do this anymore they're putting a curtain in place though and i'll get to that in a second which will kind of cover this angle now but yeah this is what it used to be like let's go again come on <laughs> i like that putting the velvet curtain there though it's kind of like fixing it with duct tape it feels kind of like that you know <laughs> oh Wow, now that's a carton. You know, you know what I said—the duct tape fix. It really is a duct tape fix, isn't it? It really is a duct tape. <laughs> I mean, it looks kind of good, though. To be honest, it looks like it kind of works. Like, like it, it looks, is going over it. You, yeah, you it looks fine. It it doesn't just clip through it. They actually put some effort into it, to be fair. Very nice, Rito. Very nice. This nicely ties into the map changes as well. There were quite a few different map changes. The most obvious one being that they changed all the Radionite boxes on all of the sides from that orange glow to this weird green one instead. I'm not quite sure. Maybe they want to push this green color and connect it more with Radionite a bit. Lore related, maybe not. It's a sort of similar green to all of the icons as well for your abilities. So maybe it's just connected with a sort of world energy, something lore related for the game. I feel like it makes sense, but yeah, I mean, pretty simple change. It's green. Also, they changed the details on the inside of Bind as well to reflect that same green color in all of the little models they have in the actual power plant or whatever. Okay, so the radio night boxes, here they are. Okay, yeah, the honestly, it's a bit weird that they're green now, but I think it's kind of nice as well, because it's a bit clearer where the objective is, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But also, like... I don't know. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> Just a little bit. Why not? Other than those map changes, most of the other changes were on split. You can see a few different ones here. I took some sort of before after screenshots when I'd look back at some footage. So sorry if the quality isn't great, but still you can see that they added the ticket booth. They added a little bit more posters and other things on the walls and on the floors. They also changed, I think, how much detail you see on some of the different graphics options. So you might want to mess with your graphics settings a bit if you want really low detail and that sort of thing. Either way, definitely some map changes here and there. Most of them were on split though, but even Bind and Haven had some stuff here and there, just not as much as split. There were also a load of quality of life fixes and changes, bug fixes, improvements to UI and things like that. So let's go through some of those. I might miss some, but these are the sort of main ones. You've got these new barriers that are a bit more purple than blue at the start of a game that keeps the teams from clashing in the preparation phase. These barriers on the minimap as well are blue and red, just to show where you are being split off and where the enemy team will be sort of standing by. That's been asked about a lot, so I'm pretty happy that they added that. There's a new orb pickup sound as well, you can have a listen here. Kind of similar to some of the other sounds like the spike blowing up now too. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, the sound is different. 
Oh, it is. Yeah. Just noticing some new sound effects, including when you load into a match, that just sound a little bit more electronic and a little bit more energy sound effect related, kind of similar to each other. Viper has a new bit of UI for her poison gauge for the ball and the poison grenade. It's pretty big, but I think it's better than the previous one that felt a little bit sort of jammed in there between the abilities. Since this one's a bit bigger as well, you can quite easily see how much is being used up and you can probably plan your usage a little bit better with that little bit of extra detail. And I'm not sure about this one, but it feels like the Viper ultimate is a bit brighter inside. It felt a little bit more clear and a little bit easier to see the walls of the Viper ult. Cypher cameras received a bit of an update too where when you're in it enemies will see it blinking in red like this so it's a bit easier to see if it's in an obscure spot or something like that and same for allies actually where allies will see a green blinking light which I guess is quite good to know that the camera is active and there's someone in it also it's blinking green like that might mean that new players will realize that that's a friendly camera rather than an enemy camera too. And there's also a new sound effect for when you get a new charge of the recon dart that the camera can shoot. Tagged. Healing UI for Sage has also been improved a little bit. It's a bit more detailed, the actual selector, when you're hovering over an ally to heal. When you're talking in-game, you get this little dot over your head in-game so people can see who is talking in front of them. Hello, testing, testing. Wow, this dumb. Again, just more quality of life stuff. This also happens when you're pinging stuff. The ping appears above your head so they can see who has pinged that. I'm not sure if the countdown was here before, but you can also do a countdown when you're pinging. So you can sort of attack together and push together at the same time. There's also a spike carrier icon in yellow above someone's head. And they changed some of the text a little bit on that. But I still feel like when you've got the spike, it's quite easy to forget about because the icon on the right hand side of your screen is pretty faint. I know a lot of people keep forgetting that they have the spike at least. So I'm not sure if this is something they should change. I'm okay with where it's at, but yeah, a lot of people forget the spike. There's also a sorting system for the scoreboard at the end of a match, so when you look at your stats, you can sort by all of the different parameters, such as diffuses, plants, first bloods, and such. They also fixed the sage wall boosts, there were just a little bit too many ridiculous ones, so now if you're placing down your wall normally, or in a choke, you'll just get the normal behavior, but if you're placing it on a little bit of a height, you'll get only three walls, and if you're placing it really high up, you'll only get two walls as well, so this should prevent some of the crazy boosts but on top of that you can't really place it on those tiny bits of terrain anymore this is kind of what it'll look like if you're aiming at something where you won't be able to place it i'm pressing a left mouse here but i can't place the wall down it just shows me the indicator omen also had some improvements made to him or well almost a nerf honestly where it's a bit easier to see when he will be vulnerable coming out of his ultimate and Previously, this was a little bit tricky because you weren't sure when we're gonna shoot to send him back versus when you should shoot to actually damage him as he arrives at your location. So yeah, thank you very much Riot for fixing that one. That had definitely tricked me a couple times. Again, just more quality of life stuff and yeah, there's probably a ton more that I missed, but those were kind of the main ones that I've noticed as I've been playing so far and as I've been in game already. But the list for bug fixes and quality of life things is quite long in these patch notes, so you can check that out in the description or in the top comment. It's also worth adding that they've said that they're going to be talking more about skin suit. Maybe by the time this video they will have even done that. I imagine there's a blog post or something coming soon, as we already know that there are more skin bundles that we've not seen yet, at least not fully officially revealed. <clears throat> Some of them kind of leaked but either way we should have more on skin soon and as you can see the store has changed a little bit you can see the currency icon that's changed a bit and that all of the different collections actually have their own icon now it's kind of like branding for that collection you can see it just behind all of the weapon skins here and on top of all of this we technically had ranked mode added in this the reason is why i'm not showing it off though is that when i'm making this video it's not live yet as in it's been added to the game but they haven't actually enabled the competitive section the competitive queue so we can't see all the different ranks we can't play placement games we just can't access that part just yet but there'll probably be another video tomorrow just going through all of the placement games and kind of talking about how the ranked system feels after i played a few games i'll try to get a few hours in so i can really get a good experience and then break that down into a sort of five ten minute video just so you guys know what the initial version of that is like and also it would be kind of fun to make a video like that for the absolute first version of ranked for this game that i can see myself playing for quite a while ahead so as a little documentation piece that'd be cool to have all right 
that's all. Thank you very much for watching this video though. Bit of a mixed bag of changes, but I figured making a video in this form was the best way to convey sort of all of them and portray them in a way where you would normally encounter them and just my reaction to checking it all out as well. I hope you enjoyed and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.